Hello, my friends. Uh, today, the occupiers continue their high activity along the entire front line. Over the past day, they conducted 95 assaults, which is a significant figure. Unfortunately, almost every day, they achieve some, albeit small, successes. They also continue shelling. Yesterday evening, they launched drone and missile strikes on Pavlograd and Kharkiv, and this is only what is known at the time of creating the video. In Pavlorad, most of the city was left without electricity due to enemy shelling, the city council said. There is also no heat and water supply. Now, let's turn to the situation along the front line, starting with the Kupinsk direction. Here, the occupies didn't conduct any attacks in the area of Sinkivka, and there was no significant activity along the front line. However, in the area of the village of Tabayivka, they decided to try again to advance and are storming the village, which the Ukrainian forces have reclaimed. So they conducted two attacks over the day, but haven't achieved any success so far. The front line remains unchanged. In the Svatova direction, their situation also remains unchanged. Minimal shelling and no new offensive actions are reported. In the direction of Krimina, the occupiers have also not achieved success. Today, uh, they are only conducting shelling of the village of Torsky. However, in the Siversk direction, the intensification continues. Today, they are once again attempting to break through to Bilohorivka and conducting intensified shelling around the village. Three attacks have been carried out over the day. Additionally, battles are taking place in the area of the village of Rozdolivka, where the occupiers are also attempting to shell the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces within the village. Uh, there have been no advancements along the front line over the day. In the Bakhmut direction, the occupiers are conducting offensive actions in Bogdanivka and attempting to advance in the area of Klishivka. There is a significant intensification with 17 attacks over the day. They haven't succeeded in reaching the village of Ivanivska and the front line remains unchanged. Although today they continue shelling to make it easier for them to later storm the remaining positions of the Ukrainian armed forces. So we are currently awaiting the results of the battles, but the situation is very challenging. The Ukrainian armed forces reported from the ground yesterday evening. The Russians moved in the direction of Chasiv Yar again in the plantations, we are working. In the Avdiivka direction, it's simply how, with 38 attacks over the day. This is in addition to the local battles already raging in Avdiivka itself. Today, battles are taking place towards the villages of Tonenke, Pervomaiske and Nevelske. However, the occupiers still have no success here as before. Meanwhile, in Avdiivka itself, fighting continues within the city. The occupiers have cut off the railway and are attempting to expand their success further. So, it's hard to believe, but yesterday evening, the Ukrainian armed forces once again began to report unofficially that the occupiers had advanced further into the private sector near the Avdiivka quarry. While one map had already confirmed this advancement two days ago. A closer look at the situation reveals that, according to the latest data from the Ukrainian forces, the occupiers have advanced approximately two streets further east from the confirmed front line. So this means that their advancement overnight amounted to approximately 300 meters. 
So this is unofficial information for now. So we are waiting for confirmation. From the southern side, the occupies continue to advance into the depth of the city as well. However, they haven't achieved significant su success here either, so the front line remains unchanged. And we are waiting to see how events will unfold further. Additionally, Elon Musk commented on the appearance of Starlink terminals in the hands of the Russians on the front lines. Elon Musk reacted to reports about Starlink in the Russian army. SpaceX has not sold its Starlink satellite communication terminals to Russia, either directly or indirectly. This was stated by the owner of the company Elon Musk. A number of false news reports claim that SpaceX is selling Starlink terminals to Russia. This is categorically false. To the best of our knowledge, no Starlinks have been sold directly or indirectly to Russia. I think everything is already obvious here. In the direction of Marienka, the occupiers conducted 28 attacks over the day. So in my opinion, uh, there hasn't been such a high number of attacks in this direction for a long time. Most importantly, these attacks were only in three areas around Krasnohorivka, the village of Pobeda, and Novomikhailivka. So far, there have been no reports of any successes by the Russians, and the Ukrainian armed forces continue to hold their defense. Meanwhile, the occupiers haven't stopped shelling, and all border villages are under fire. In the Vuhlidar direction, the occupiers have resumed attacks near the village of Priyutne. As before, they are trying to expand their controlled territory here, but they haven't achieved any success, and the situation remains unchanged. Additionally, uh, there is information that the occupiers have created a specific defensive line from Volnavaha to Alenivka. Muscovites in the Donetsk region assembled a 30 kilometers long Tsar train, which includes more than 2,000 cars. A continuous structure of freight cars stretches along the branch from the railway station in Olenivka to Volnavaka and has about 2,100 cars of various types. The construction of this wagon centipede began in July 2023. Apparently, rolling stock stolen from the temporarily occupied territories was used for construction. This is a very specific engineering structure, the effectiveness of which is difficult to assess. The idea is clear, an obstacle to the advance of the defense forces. It can be considered as a separate line of defense, because it is extremely difficult to damage, move or blow up a 30-kilometer mass of metal, and the movement of equipment through such an obstacle without breaking through the corridor is impossible. As seen, the longer the occupies stay on our land, the more fortified they become and build defensive lines. So it's reported that in Mariupol yesterday, anti-aircraft defense systems were active and it seems that the Ukrainian armed forces are attempting to destroy their warehouses and bases of the occupies, which have been brought here continuously. In the Zaporizhia direction, battles have resumed in the area of the village of Robotina. But the activity here is not the highest. So far, only one attack has been recorded over the day, and it was unsuccessful. Uh, the Ukrainian armed forces held their defense, and the front line remains unchanged. But Shalin continues as before. In the Kherson direction, the occupies continue shelling the right bank and periodically attempt to clear the Ukrainian forces stronghold on the left bank. However, as before, all attempts are unsuccessful and the Ukrainian forces, uh, with the support of FPV drones, destroy all the enemy groups 
attempting to launch an assault. So uh, Russian military correspondents describe the situation as follows. Today there were four attacks on the enemy's bridgehead in the village of Krenki. Tanks and armored fighting vehicles did not support us. Assaults without success. Ours retreated to their original positions. Units from the 328th Airborne Rifle Division, the 337th Airborne Assault Regiment of the 104th Airborne Assault Regiment and the 26th Motorized Rifle Regiment of the 70th Motorized Rifle Regiment launched attacks on the village of Krenki today. Unfortunately, today, due to a lack of armament, we are losing time and cannot reinforce the advance on the left bank to expand the stronghold. However, perhaps the command has completely different plans and they may, may not even plan to expand it. So for now, it's a mystery. Meanwhile, Britain has sent key equipment worth $100 million to Russia, including semiconductors and drones. UK suppliers exported critical components, including semiconductors and drones, worth more than $100 million to Russia in the first 10 months of last year. About $15 million worth of the goods were supplied to Russia directly from UK. Warehouses The figure represents a dramatic curtailment in trade between Russia and the UK compared with 2022 when critical components worth about $770 million were exported. But British technology is still finding its way to Russia's military, often indirectly through foreign third parties, nearly two years after the full-scale invasion of Ukraine began. And that's all for me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.